Welcome. I'm going to do a problem here with a Atwood's machine problem where you have um, two masses that are connected by a string and the string is draped over this this pulley. The pulley has a mass M3, the heavier mass is M2, the lighter mass is M1. And um, we're going to release this and it's going to the, the heavier mass will of course go down as the other mass goes up. And so here's the after. So this is before and after. Now this pulley is going to have some friction. And so the axle, um, in the axle there's going to be some friction. And so there's going to be some thermal energy that gets created um, from uh, that friction. Uh, we're going to say that air resistance is negligible. Uh, the pulley also has um, some rotational inertia because it's got um, a non-negligible mass. Okay, so um, how do you, the, the problem might be something like this. Here's, this would be um, the example problem. I'm just going to read this to you. So you got two blocks with masses M1, 2 kilograms, and M2, 10 kilograms, and they're attached to the ends of a string that's draped over a pulley of mass um, 3 kilograms. M3 is 3 kilograms. The masses are hanging straight down as um, an Atwood's machine. The pulley is a solid cylinder of radius R equals 0.05 meters, and there's some friction in the axle. Okay. So the question wants to know, long question here, uh, so the system is released from rest and the string moves without slipping over the pulley. If the 10 kilogram mass is traveling a speed of 2 meters per second, V, 2 meters per second, after dropping a height of 1 meter, how much mechanical energy was transferred to thermal energy due to friction in the pulley's axle? Okay, so let's just show you uh, one way to solve this problem. And so, um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at this in terms of energy conservation. And I'm going to make, oh, sorry about that, shook that there. Um, I'm going to make the potential energy um, equal zero line, the gravitational potential energy equal zero line right at the base here, right where this M1 starts out. So this is um, gravitational potential energy equal zero. And so, um, and then I'm just going to say all the energy in the system here um, will equal all the energy in the system there. And so the energy that's in this system right here, um, we're going to, I know M3 has some height, and so it has some gravitational potential energy in that, in that, um, due to that. But I'm at, since both, both before and after, the wheel doesn't go any, that that pulley doesn't get any closer to the ground. I'm gonna that would what that would uh, be on both sides of the equation. We'd cancel it out. So I'm just not going to include it. So the only um, en mechanical energy then that we're going to have at the beginning, since nothing is moving at first, is just going to be um, the gravitational potential energy stored in um, the, due to the fact that this mass is is a, a, a height h above the ground. Okay, so the total energy before then, the energy before, should equal the energy after. And so the total energy before is going to be M2GH. Okay, then afterwards, um, we have a whole bunch of energy. So we have... Um, this is this is moving. M2 is moving downward, and M1 um, went up the same distance h because the string doesn't stretch. We'll say so. This is again. This is um, a height h that it went up, and so um, so it, this has some kinetic energy. This has some kinetic energy. M1 has some potential energy, and the wheel is rotating. So that has rotational kinetic energy, and there's thermal energy due to the friction in the wheel. So let's let's detail all those energies. So we have the kinetic energy of the of M2. It's moving with the speed V. They, these will both have the same speeds because they're connected to the same string. So that's the kinetic energy of um, this mass plus the kinetic energy of the smaller mass. plus the um, gravitational potential energy of um, this thing went up, and so this is going to be M1GH. 
and um, then this thing is spinning around so plus one half I omega squared plus um, the thermal energy that we gained that's now um, in, in the um, system. Now there was thermal energy at the beginning because it wasn't at zero Kelvin, but the, that what I really mean is the additional thermal energy that's gained. Okay, so so we started out, you know, with with a simple uh, m two gh, and we get, and it went into all these different energies. All right, so um, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Or right, let's I'm going to take this i and omega. And I'm gonna. Um, we're gonna put the I in the rotational inertia for this wheel. It's a it's a solid disk, and I'll use a bridge equation to omega is related to v with that bridge equation. So here goes. It's gonna be um, m two g h is equal to one half m two v squared plus one half m1v squared plus m1gh plus one half now for i i for a solid disk is one half mr squared that'd be m3r squared and then omega since omega let's see v is equal to omega r omega times r so omega is equal to v over r. Now with omega squared, so it'd be v squared over r squared plus thermal energy. Okay, those r squareds cancel. Um, uh, one quick thing about the omega v and r. That's only because the the string is not sliding over the wheel. So like a bug, a bug right here will have the same speed as M2, but it will also have the same um, speed as a bug right there, right on the right on the wheel, as a bug over here. So all these little bugs that are hanging on that have very negligible mass, they all have the same speed. And that's why we can say that this is true. If the string slides over the pulley, if there's any slippage of the string on the pulley, then we can't say this is true. All right. So um, I'm going to stop there because um, we know everything about, uh, it's just a matter of filling this all in. And um, because everything is a known except for the thermal energy. And so at this point, um, I can go ahead and, and fill that in and um, solve for the thermal energy. All right. Thanks.